Hello there, my name is Kyle Chesney, and these are 10 interesting facts about sharks. They're not really in any particular order or anything like that. It's not a top 10. Just 10 things I thought were interesting and wanted to learn more about. The Greenland shark is the longest living vertebrate in the world. A vertebrate is an animal with a backbone. Obviously, since, it's, since a shark is a vertebrate, it's the longest living shark. It lives anywhere from 300 to 500 years. It has a very slow heartbeat. Its heart beats only once every 12 seconds. And it lives in the freezing cold, cold of the Arctic, up in Greenland and the Arctic area. Uh, experts think their icy cold habitat and very slow lifestyle could be why they live so long. They can grow up to 20 feet long. They're in the sleeper shark family, which has 17 members. They're pretty much blind due to the, uh, the parasites that are on their eyes that you can see in that picture. Uh, their flesh is also poisonous. It's been found to make dogs drunk when, when the dogs consume it, so that's always great. Uh, it does not migrate from the Arctic waters. There's still a lot scientists have to learn, though. All right, number two, lemon sharks. Before birth, lemon sharks can smell around 100 times better than you can right now. Lemon sharks are found in uh, tropical coral reef areas with lots of mangrove trees. It's a member of the ground shark family. It has two dorsal fins that you can see in the picture. They're almost the same size, which is pretty unique. Uh, lemon sharks are known to stay together with other sharks they've swam with before, like the, they make friends pretty much. They'd rather swim with a shark they've swam with before than just any stranger. Scientists uh, also have studied, they've also studied pups of lemon sharks in a predator-free environment. The sharks still chose to swim with each other rather than by themselves. Lemon sharks are also one of the smartest sharks there is. They were taught to blink when a light flashed, which they learned how to do 10 times faster than cats. Being shark smart, so some safety tips on how to avoid potential shark encounters. So don't swim near seals or schools of fish. Follow the lifeguard instructions. Swim close to shore, like waist deep water. Uh, avoid swimming at twilight hours when limited sunlight res restricts our visibility to see what's around us in the water. Uh, swim and surf in groups, and you can download the Sharktivity app. It gives you like alerts about shark sightings that are in your area. Obviously, the chance of, en of encounters are really low. Like Surfers who take to the water regularly have a 1 in 17 million chance of being attacked by a shark. So, on top of that, in 2018, human, humans killed approximately 1 million sharks. Comparatively, sharks killed only 5 people that year. You're more likely to die from a vending machine falling on you, die from a coconut falling on your head, die from a lightning strike, die in a bike accident, die in a car crash on your way to the beach, than be killed by a shark at the beach. All right, number four, shark researchers. The most well-known shark researcher for me would be Dr. Greg Skomel. He's a senior fisheries biologist with Massachusetts Marine Fisheries. He is currently in charge of the Massachusetts Shark Research Program. In the last 10 years, he's tagged over 230 great white sharks. Uh, once had a shark breach right under him on the boat. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it, just show the video clip. Dr. Skolmull has appeared on Shark Week multiple times. You can probably find him on the pulpit of the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy research boat that's in Cape Cod Bay. 
The pulpit is the long metal walkway that sticks out from the front of the boat. Uh, I had the unique experience to be on a shadow boat that followed around their research boat for a couple of hours. Unfortunately, Dr. Scoble did not tag any sharks that day, but we did see a lot of them that were rather close to the shore. Uh, some other well-known researchers, Chris Fallows out of South Africa, Dr. Chris Lowe out of California, Dr. Allison Cock out of South Africa, and Dr. Joni R Rumor out of Australia. Dr. Rumor is leading the PhysioShark project, which investigates how climate change has been affecting newborn and juvenile reef sharks. A juvenile is like a kid or a teenager, I guess. Uh, Dr. Chris Fallows studied great white sharks and their hunting habitats. He was the first member of the shark scientific community to see a great white shark breach. Breaching is when the shark jumps out of the water. You've probably seen these breaching events in uh, Air Jaws from Shark Week. It's very popular. Chris is also a wildlife photographer, so he doesn't just work on sharks. He photographs other animals as well. Dr. Chris Lowe is the director of California State University Long Beach Shark Lab. They do lots of interesting work there. Sharks have great hearing and sense of smell. A shark can hear a seal or a fish that is swimming 800 feet away. 800 feet is more than two football fields away if you're having trouble picturing how far that is. Sharks have pretty much hidden ears. They're located just behind the eyes, a pair of tiny holes. These holes are called endo endothematic pores and they're not visible. They are not that little black mark on the screen that, that picture makes them seem like. Uh, their inner ear is made up of three fluid-filled tubes, four sensory membrane, all, all of which work together to allow the shark hear, to hear in different directions underwater. Something we humans actually can't do while we're underwater. We, don't, we can't tell which direction the sound's coming from. Uh, the lateral line system. The lateral line system is a series of tiny pores all over the shark's body. They detect low frequency that low frequencies that are similar to vibrations. It alerts a shark about struggling fish or seals up to 800 feet away. A uh, sense of smell. Two thirds of a shark's brain is dedicated to its smell. A uh, shark's sense of smell is 10,000 times stronger than ours is. Uh, if the current is right, a shark can smell a drop of blood that's over a half mile away. Sharks don't breathe through their nose. This allows their nose to be fully devoted to sm smelling and picking up scents that are in the water. The sharks use their sense of smell to navigate through the oceans. It's how some sharks migrate so far. A shark can also detect smells using only one nostril, so that can always come in handy. Uh, the, sentry, the sensory smells in a shark's nose send important information up to the brain. So like, hey, struggling fish this way. All right, number six, shark mouth. So both of the shark's upper and lower jaws moved. So this is not the case for us humans when we bite, like uh, only our bottom jaw moves down, but sharks, their top jaw moves up and their bottom jaw moves down. Baby sharks or pups are born with a full set of teeth. Sharks' mouths have over 300 teeth in them, all arranged in neat little rows. Uh, we adult, he or adult humans only have 32 teeth. When a shark loses a tooth, which happens a lot, a new one moves right in immediately from the row behind it. A shark can lose over 30,000 teeth in its lifetime. The amount of teeth in each row varies from shark to shark. Uh, a shark's tooth is designed specifically for that shark's prey. So dogfish have large teeth like molars that are designed for eating like crabs and lobsters. Great whites have large sharp teeth for ripping through seal flesh and breaking seal's bones. And sand tigers have long pointy teeth that work like spears. All right, at number seven, we have the Meg. The Megalodon shark was a prehistoric shark that now only exists in modern movies. It lived around 20 to 2 million years ago. Not really, scientists aren't really sure. 
four times as large as the Great White and 20 times as heavy. It has the largest shark teeth ever found. They were as big as bananas. Uh, teeth are found all across the world. Some people still believe that the Megalodon shark still exists deep in the ocean today. It is extreme, this is un extremely unlikely due to the uh, extremely large diet that would be needed to support a shark of the Meg's size. This extremely large amount of food that would need to eat is the reason that it ultimately went extinct. Its large diet consisted of whales, seals, dolphins, giant squid, and other large sea, cre sea creatures. The Meg has recently become a lot more popular due to its appearances in Shark Week and the movie called The Meg. At number eight, we have the Nurse Shark. The Nurse Shark is found in tropical waters in the Eastern Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Its habitat consists of coral reefs, lagoons, sandy flats, seagrass areas, and mangrove keys. So what makes the nurse shark so unique is it's one of the only nocturnal sharks, which means it sleeps during the day and comes out at night. Almost none of the other sharks even sleep, which is what makes the nurse shark so interesting. Unlike all the other sharks, it does not need constant water moving through its gills to breathe, which is the case for all the other sharks. This allows them to sleep during the day and be active at night. They're known to sleep in groups, as you can see in the picture in the bottom right. They use their barbells and snout to search for prey on the bottom. Their prey consists of bottom reef invertebrates, which are animals that don't have a backbone, bony fish, and rays. All right, at number nine, we have 20% of all sharks are in danger of extinction. This is due to pollution, global warming, shrinking habitats, and bycatch. Bycatch is when sharks are caught by accident in a commercial fishing net, as you can see in the picture in the bottom left. I mean, there's going to be a shark, a, a shark or a couple sharks in that net somewhere. Uh, they could also be caught by fishermen who are longlining or using thousands of baited hooks to catch tuna or marlin. They unfortunately end up catching sharks by accident. Uh, water temperatures have been rising with the global temperatures. The water temperatures Im impact plants and animals throughout the food chain, which makes it more difficult for both predator and prey to survive. Uh, humans have been destroying and damaging coral reefs. These reefs are damaged by tourists, overfishing, and rising water temperatures. Sharks are constantly fished for their fins, meat, oil, liver, teeth, and skin. Pollution in the ocean. Farmers use chemicals known as pesticides on their crops. These can be washed into waterways that lead to the ocean, polluting the habitats of sharks and lots of other ocean creatures. If a shark is found dead and a necropsy is done, they often find all sorts of trash and other items thrown into the ocean by humans. All right, at number 10, we have the thresher shark. Thresher sharks have a very unique tail. They'll use it for hunting. They will use this tail to stun fish they can do this by whipping their tail at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. Uh, they can also use their tail to churn up water around schools of fish, which create mini whirlpools, making the fish caught in the whirlpools pretty much helpless. Uh, the thresher shark is one of the few sharks who will breach. Breaching is when the sharks jump out of the water. Scientists believe they do this to get rid of parasites called copods. I think, I think that's how you say it. Uh, thresher sharks caught by fishermen in California are more often hooked in their tail instead of their mouths. This is because they, they try and stun the bait or the, they, they stun the bait that the fishermen are using. And then the hook that's in the bait hooks their tail. Uh, thresher sharks only have 80 teeth, while great whites only have 
or well, great whites have 300, and they're found worldwide in warm waters. All right, we have a little wrap-up slide here. Number one, the Greenland shark. Number two, the lemon sharks. Number three, shark smarts. Number four, shark researchers. Number five, hearing and smell. Number six, shark melts. Number seven, the meg. Number eight, nurse sharks. Number nine, sharks are in danger of extinction. Number 10, thresher sharks. All right, a little bit about me. My name's Kyle Chesney. I'm 13 years old and I live in Duxbury, Massachusetts. I've been interested in sharks since I was about six years old, mostly great whites. My 10 interesting facts were based on subjects I thought were interesting and wanted to learn more about. I hope you wanted to learn about them too. I think it's important for people to learn more about sharks because education helps in shark conservation by changing people's perceptions about sharks. When you can educate others about sharks, we are helping sharks. See if you can make your own top 10 list about sharks, whether it's your 10 favorite sharks, 10 different facts about one shark, whatever you want to do. And yeah, that's going to be it. I hope you thought this was interesting. Uh, have a good rest of your day.